All right, looks like we're live. Um, hi, I'm uh, Michael. I'm going to be putting together a computer today. Uh, it is a Ryzen 7 5000 series um, 5800X, which is 8 cores and 16 threads uh, for the CPU. The RAM is um, T-Create, which is, I don't think I've bought this uh, this manufacturer before, but it had good reviews on Amazon, so I went for it. 32 gigabytes in two 16 gigabyte sticks, running at 3600 megahertz, which uh, nice and fast. The motherboard it's going into is a Asus Tough Gaming B550 Plus Wi-Fi 2. Got a two terabyte 980 Pro, which is a 4.0 NVMe drive. Nice and nice and uh, fast throughput. Lots of bandwidth. Uh, Zotac. Um, GeForce RTX 3060 Ti for the graphics. To power it all, we're going with a EVGA 850 watt gold, and I think this is fully modular. Yeah, well, mostly modular. The, the 24 pin and the 8 pin are on there. Uh, you can't take them off. To cool it, we're going with a, a Peerless Assassin 120. And this is from Thermalrite. I've used this once before and had good results with it. It's it's about half the price of uh, similar coolers, um, and does very nearly the, the same you know job of cooling it. And then for the case, we're going with a um, Corsair 4000D Airflow, which is still in the box at the moment. But can you all see that? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. There. Anyway, let's start opening this stuff up. Um, supply set down here because it's so bulky and the cooler sit right there okay motherboard box sealed hey Harshal how you doing so this guy's having a really good computer GTX 1650 only four gigabytes that's not awful. It could be worse. But uh, this is a 1660 Ti uh, with 8 gigabytes of RAM. I did put that in the title, didn't I? Yes, I did. Uh, what is going on here? Ah! Wi-Fi antenna. We're not going to put that on. That can be put on once the client gets it back to their house. Got in here a back plate for the motherboard. We will need that. Some SATA cables, SATA data cables. We won't need those. We will need at least one of these risers and screws to put the M.2 on. What is this? Uh, for for use single sided M.2 SSDs. It's little thermal pads. I don't think those are necessary, but. That may change as uh, solid state drives advance. Uh, don't need the CD. Comes with stickers. That's nice. And the manual. Probably could use that. Uh, put this thing out of its out of its bag. Are you seriously think that a GTX series four gigabyte card is more than an enough and 1650 I mean enough for who how much money does the person have although I don't know why you're bringing up uh, a GTX 1650 we we've got a, a 16 um, RTX 3060 Ti here Are you saying that you, is that what you have? Um, motherboard box will need. And we will set that there. And I believe the cooler on this requires um, the um, the AMD hardware to be removed a little bit, but we'll get to that. 
let's go ahead and install the uh, the CPU. So yeah, most of this box is empty. Um, they use the same box for the uh, the lower end uh, CPUs that come with coolers. This thing does not come with a cooler. It does come with a CPU and a sticker. Right. So to install the um, the CPU, you push the bar down on the socket and bring it up. You rotate the CPU so that the triangle on one corner matches up with the triangle on the socket. It's also the uh, the opposite corner from where the the arm is on the socket. You basically just put it approximately right and then move it around a little bit until it drops. You can push it down just to make sure, but you just lower the arm. CPU is installed. Let's go ahead and do the um, the M.2 solid state drive. We web cold. <laughs> Is a 20, 12600K better than a 5800X? Uh, I think that's comparable, you know, pretty even if I remember right. But if you, if you take that, uh, that 12600K uh, add a versus between it and 5800X. Put that in Google. You will find lots of websites that show you the performance differences between the two. Okay, so M.2. There it is. It needs to go under this uh, this heat sink right here. Let's see. And where is my little screwdriver? There it is. So the heat sink has two screws holding it down, and they may be captive. Do they all come out? No, they're not meant to. Uh, it does have a, um, a peel here that we'll go ahead and take off. So this is a thermal pad. Just want to find a corner and peel it. Oh, come on. Peel. There we go. So the M.2 solid state drive will go right here, and we need to add a, um, a riser right here for it. Which looks like we've got two risers and two screws in this bag that came with the motherboard. So yeah, it's for this one, and there's another one down here that we could add a second um, solid state drive to. Okay, we're just jumping out, are we? Let me set those right there. All right, so this guy, it's an 80 millimeter long one. You can see how long it is. If you have a shorter one, um, 32s can go there. I believe that's a 60 and 80 is here. There's also out here, there's a, an even longer one, which I think is 120. Um, 120 millimeters or 132 or something like that. Don't see many of those. Anti-troll, hi. <laughs> okay. You're French. Okay, cool. Hey, my English is pretty bad, too. All right, so M.2 solid state drives. Um, there's a, a notch on one side, which matches up with a bit of plastic on the socket. You put it in at about a 30 degree angle and just kind of shimmy it in until it stops. And then when you press it down, it should match up to where the screw goes. 
into the riser and it's in. And we can put back the um, the heat sink. Get one side started and then do the other. Are you in? No, you're not. There it goes. And tighten down. Okay. Put this right back in the box. I guess we'll do RAM next. If you've got two sticks of RAM, they almost always go into the second and third so slot from the CPU. And sometimes there's there's two things you have to, one on this side, one on this side, you have to lay down. But uh, a lot of times it's just on that side you have to worry about. Okay, that is sealed. Golden Gamer, how you doing? Oh, you're depressed. Well, that's not good. Got to get yourself out of that or get out of that. I don't know how it works. I've, I've, I don't know that I've, I've been depressed maybe I have if I if I was would I knew it or would I know it oh man this is this does not want to come apart there we go got it yeah, and it comes with little T Force stickers or TC Create. You coming out easy? These are really tight in there. There we go. Okay, we got one. So for RAM install, um, you look for a notch slightly off center, which matches up with a bit of plastic there, and you stick it on the guides on the uh, the top and bottom. And you just push down both sides till it clicks. A2 and B2. Yeah, I believe that's right, Harshal. Yep, they're also, well, so it's, yeah, A2 and B2. And they're, they're labeled. Um, but yeah, let me put this other one in. Subham Shaw, how are you doing? Anti trolls trying. Nice. Golden Gamer. Oh, a hard drive died immediately. That sucks. It does happen. Um, drives can fail immediately. Anything can fail immediately. You know, you, you expect to get like five or six years out of uh, out of a drive, and then they die in you know a day or two weeks or something. Massive bummer. Well, hopefully they'll send you a replacement. It's a Dell Optiplex nine ninety. Oh, that's an older one. That's still a it it's it still should have a good processor in it though. What does it have like a a second generation Core i five or a Core i seven in it? Well, you could also use this as an opportunity to um, not install um, a hard drive. Um, maybe reinstall the one that they send you as a replacement because the the initial one failed. But look into getting yourself a solid state drive. For you you can get a, a 200 and f uh, 256 gigabyte solid state drive to install Windows on. Makes the computer a whole lot faster for like 40 bucks. I mean, they're not expensive anymore. Aussie website called Workbenches. Okay, have you contacted them? See if they'll send you out a, a replacement drive since um, yours failed. But also, how do you know the drive failed? The drive may not have failed. The computer may be having some other problem. So when you contact them, just start by telling them the problem, not what you think the problem is. Tell them the, the symptoms that you've, uh, that you've seen. Pre-used parts. Oh yeah, I mean a a, a Dell nine ninety. 
I mean, that in itself is like 12 years old at this point. So I wouldn't be surprised if they used used parts. You have a spare one? Okay, so you can just put in another uh, another drive. Harshal, you found a cockroach inside your, your computer? Well, um, time to clean up then, I would say. I, I've had a few... Um, few times where I bought brought someone's computer into the house and even once had something shipped to the house and saw a cockroach run out of it and or run out of the person's computer and all you can do is like you know get it out of your house blow it out as much as you can and then put down roach bait and so far I've, I've been able to fend them off they ha I haven't had any kind of an actual infestation uh <laughs> I don't think you spelled barracuda right. You you uh, you, uh, you you said something a, a little bit different there, but that's okay. It's clicking. Okay, so yeah, that that's that's not good, Harshal. Um, heavy clicking sounds from drives that uh, then stop working is is no bueno. You called them three times. They didn't respond. Well, that sucks. I wonder if um, if they want you to to put in a request online, maybe. Um, cockroaches don't really need um, accommodations. <laughs> they they pretty much go wherever they want to, wherever they think is food. Okay, if it's just regular read sounds, that's uh, that's normal. You, clicking noises like that, like just the little kind of kind of noises, are are, are pretty are fine. Uh, what else? We installed the the CPU, the RAM, and the M.2 NVMe solid state drive. I guess let's go ahead and do the cooler. Go ahead and get it on there. Okay, so it's got 220 millimeter fans, which we probably won't install until after we get it in the case. Although, we may go ahead and do it. I'm not sure. All right. Uh, in between the two towers, we've got a bit of packing material. Insulation guide. We'll need that. And the cooler itself. Uh, it's got a peel on the bottom we're going to have to take off. And it looks like we're applying the thermal compound ourselves. It's not like pre-applied to the bottom of it, which is fine. Speaking of thermal compound application, I generally, in a CPU this size, just put about a, a pea-sized amount in the middle. And then when I put the cooler on, it spreads it out. What do you what do you all use for um, uh, application methods? Do you do you do lines? Do you do X's? Do you manually spread it or something? Or I'm curious what y'all's uh, preference is. Okay, so this is marked AM4. Is that all AM4? Possibly. I, I'm not sure what this bottom section is. It may be, oh, that, that entire thing may be aimed for. This is marked 1150X and 1200. That's for Intel. 1700 is also Intel. What do we have in here? So that's thermal compound and a couple of crossbars. And these guys will be for connecting the fans. Let's set them over there. Fan splitter, so we can plug the two fans in here and then plug in one to the motherboard. That's nice. Split over there too. 
So yeah, we don't need the 1700. We don't need that. We probably need this. I, I'm not sure yet. Um, no, so this is listed as Intel. So it's 1150X, 1217X. So we shouldn't need that. All right, let's, let's put that back in there. And let's see, directions. I'm pretty sure I installed this a couple of weeks ago, so it should be a, a blast from the past. Or the not so far, far fast, far past, sorry. Okay, so we, it says to take off the plastic bits here that are held in by four screws, but we are going to use the, uh, the back plate. And we're going to be putting on these bits here. Okay, thermal. And then we go into Intel. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. I'm going to leave that right there so I can glance over at it. But let's get this off. I think I've got the torque turned up on this. I was using it to uh, install a few um, uh, screws into walls and screws into uh, Target furniture, a bookcase yesterday. Let's go ahead and turn this down. So yeah, 21 is like full power. I generally run it at 1, just so I don't over-tighten things, especially on laptops. Uh, Anti-troll open box. Partially use the manual spreading method. And VWeb code does dot. Yeah, I generally try and just follow the directions. If if if, if I see directions of how they want me to uh, to to put on thermal compound, I will. On this one, it looks like it's just a pea-sized amount right in the middle is what they're looking for. But, you know, you can do that. You can do um, a dot in the middle and then four dots around the corners. You can do X's. You can do lines. They're all correct. Steve at Game, Gamers Nexus, um, I think Jay also, Jay's Two Cents, has, has done uh, studies on that. And as long as you don't put – as long as you put enough, it's fine. The um, – what you don't want to do is put a tiny amount and have it not cover the, um, the heat spreader. All right, so this is labeled AM4. This, I think, goes along with it, but I'm not sure. Let's, let's just open this guy right here. So for AM4, we took that off, and we're adding on... Don't you roll away on me. Um, I think I'm, I think we're missing something. We have, oh, no, we're not. We have four of them. Okay, so it looks like we're putting... these red spacers right on top of the back plate screws and then we're taking these crossbars the two bent ones and these will be for probably some other core uh, what do I do with the box Go back in there. So we're doing that. And we're going to align them so that the bend is toward the processor. Like that. And then it shows to put these guys through. screws so 
So I'm just finger tightening them right now. Oh, that fell. Come back up here. <laughs> the directions say apply hot paste. That seems like a translation issue. Okay, so I tighten them down kind of just um, with uh, finger tight, and now I'm screwing them down like that on setting one. So not super tight, but like if I took a another screwdriver and just tried to turn these, they probably wouldn't turn much. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So we did that. So then we do thermal compound, which I will do my standard pea-sized amount in the middle. opening. Whenever you're touching um, heat sink fins like this, it's important well, throw away the silica so no one eats it. But it's important not to squeeze these very much. And it's not because you damage this. It's because you'll end up scratching or cutting the hell out of yourself. Um, okay, so warning. Peel. Please peel off label before you use it. Good idea. The thermal, the, uh, the, the, the thermal uh, efficiency would be pretty low if we didn't do that. So yeah, this isn't bad at all. You, um, these screws that are in here are on springs, and they will go into here and here. So I'm just going to get it approximately over, just paying attention to having these screws right over the, um, the post. Go in here and tighten them down. So I'm going to start just by doing a couple of turns to get it going onto the post. Do the same here. So it's on there. Now I can go back and tighten them down. I'm going to do 10 turns per side. And the idea behind this is that it will... I lost count. That's pretty close. It will push down the thermal compound evenly, so it kind of flattens out and spreads all the way. That's just about tight. Yeah, I think I did it pretty evenly. So I'm just going in good and tightening it down. Not crazy tight, but pretty much where it stops. Uh, yeah, so fans. I guess we can go ahead and put the fans on. Hello, Monica. I once saw a water bottle that looked like somebody had spread out thermal paste all over it. Okay. It's probably not very um, very safe. You wouldn't want to you wouldn't want to uh, ingest in any way thermal compound. It's really not good for you. It's good for connecting a cooler, not for a uh, not for ingesting. Okay, so there, there's not an indication on here of the direction. Sometimes there'll be arrows that tell you. But if you look at it, you generally, it'll have, most fans will have a logo like this. And what this is, what this generally means is that the air will come through this way and go out that way. And you can kind of look at it when the fan blades spin, they're kind of cupped like this, that the, the air is going to go that direction. That's what we want. 
So let's do like this. Because we also want to be able to come down here and plug in the fans. Uh, let's see. Usually you put it through the ones right here, and then it comes over, and you kind of stretch it over and get it like that. Okay, it's a little high. I can move it down some. Undo that. Move it a little bit lower. So I'm generally just trying to get it about approximately the same height as the cooler. And I can I can feel these things wanting to cut into me. I wouldn't be surprised if I end up with a cut on this one. It's very tight. I don't know if y'all can see the indentations. No cut so far, but it's very close to cutting me. Okay, same deal. Logo there. Air will go that way. That's what we want. So just approximately like that. Uh, I think the RAM... Marshall says, I think the RAM slot get pressed after you super tight the CPU cooler. I'm not sure what you're what you're trying to say there, Harshall. Those are generally not connected. But like you said, uh, could be a uh, a language barrier issue. Over and good. All right, so we've got two fan cables. We don't have to use this. I, I think I will, just so we have an extra fan header there. There's a, there's it's a CPU fan and CPU optional of these two right here. So we could just plug these directly in right there. It's just let's see how this does. You plug each one in, and you would plug this into the main CPU fan header. And then you generally have enough space to stuff extra things like this, yeah, down like that. So they're out of the way. Yeah, that'll look good. Right. Well, um, we didn't end up needing this, so this is for some other... They, they really should have had a sticker, so this is AMD. This should say, like, AM4, or, or not AM4, sorry. This is AM4. This should show some kind of an Intel label, because it's pretty obviously for an Intel CPU. Although, that could also be for, like, a Threadripper. It doesn't matter. It's not for us. So yeah, this will go in the motherboard box. Extra stuff there. Right, well let's hook it up outside of the case before we actually go and build it in the case. Um, whenever I have time, we have time, don't we? I like to uh, get everything, or just about everything connected and make sure we get video on the screen. Because it sucks. If you build a computer, it's all in. You've got all your cables run. It all looks good. Then you go to turn it on, it doesn't work because something failed or something's not connected. Then you have to take it apart to figure it out. I hate that. I really don't like it. So, most of the time, I will do this. Okay. So Zotac card. 
I um, don't see any obvious peels. That's not a peel. Uh, okay, nothing to peel on it. I don't think I saw any peels on the motherboard either. Maybe the only thing we'll peel on this system is uh, was the uh, the the cover over the the um, the heatsink. So one of the reasons I put it on the motherboard box. Yes, it also keeps from damaging the surface you have it on. Um, but if you're doing something like this, putting um, a graphics card in, that faceplate right there, if we didn't have it on top of a, a motherboard box or some kind of box, it wouldn't, it would, uh, when we go to put the graphics card in, it would like hit the table or whatever you're working on. But yeah, what you do is you line up the slot with the card, kind of do that, and then push. And it's in. Power supply. What did I do with the power supply? There it is. Power supply hooked up. Let's see what we got here. Pippin didn't. <laughs> I get a 3080 and undervolt it. Undervolted is really, uh, really interesting. For anyone who doesn't know, the, the general the idea be behind undervolting is yes to say power but it also uh, by giving the chip whatever it is GPU or CPU or whatever by giving it less voltage it makes it run cooler and if it runs cooler a lot of modern CPUs and graphics chips will allow themselves to run faster probably not very much faster but you can end up getting a performance boost by giving it less power, which is kind of counterintuitive when you when you first hear about it. But the way I just explained it maybe makes sense to you. Um, okay, so the 24-pin power is um, in here permanently, which that makes perfect sense. There's I can't think of a reason why you would remove or want to remove the 24-pin power cable from a power supply. Okay, so this is mostly PCIe, like graphics card stuff, but I see a Molex in here. What's up with the Molex? Aha. Ha! So, in case you had something that took a, a floppy drive power connector, this one has two, that it adapts through a Molex connector, which there should be a Molex in here somewhere. But yeah, we got we got lots of um, PCI Express power cables. So we're not going to need that <laughs> Molex the floppy. Um, okay, so this is two six plus twos per cable, and there is another one and another one. Okay, so this thing's this thing can take. Um, a monster graphics card. There, there's enough here to to plug in four eight-pin PCI Express power cables. We only need one. I was hoping to find one that only had uh, just the the straight one connection. So it'd be like this to just one of these instead of broken out because this is going to kind of sit in the case and you know just doesn't it sh it didn't need to be there. In with this with this graphics card because this graphics card only takes an eight-pin PCI Express. 8K is good. I agree. Okay, so this is mostly CPU cables, but there's also a uh, a Molex in here. What is what is going on with this? Okay, so if you need something with uh, that, or if you have something that requires Molex cables, that's there. We're not going to need that, and we only need one of these. So if your motherboard has um, eight, well, more than eight. CPU power connections, which are over here, you can plug in two of them, or you can have an eight and then a four because these cut these come apart. So if you had an eight and then you only needed four additional, you could do that. So we need one of those. What else is in here that we might need? Okay, so this is SATA power. We don't have any SATA devices, and some screws for putting the uh, power supply in the case, and then the main power connector, which 
all of this stuff, all this extra stuff, I'm going to put in the motherboard box when I'm done with the motherboard box. But in the meantime, it can just sit over here on the floor. I mean, think about what it's done. It hasn't done anything. All it's going to do for us is power our computer, right? Or power the client's computer. Um, in case everyone's anyone's wondering, I'm building this for someone. They, um, they asked me to put together a parts list for them, which I did. They, um, they ordered it from Amazon and had it shipped directly to me, which I have never met this person. So that, that amount of, uh, of trust kind of surprised me. Although I didn't, I didn't, I don't think I talked to them. They may have been referred to me by a friend or family or something like that. So maybe that's why they had enough confidence in me to ship me $1,500 worth of computer parts, but they did. Uh, okay. So I need to plug this into a part of the power supply that lists VGA, like that right there, because this is for the graphics card. And then the CPU, we've got two fours that you stick together, and those go into the motherboard, but this will plug into a spot that says CPU, like right there. So that should be all we need to power this thing. No. Um, yes. Yes, that is it. Because we already got the 24 pin in there. Uh, possibly came with some pretty nice um, Velcro straps. Okay, so 20 plus 4 is what you see on most of the time. Um, the reason this is this is separable is because some motherboards, really old ones at this point, and not very good ones, uh, only needed 20 pins. But uh, most modern um, motherboards need 24, so you just stick the the four together with the 20, and you get it around the cooler. <laughs> it's kind of getting caught on the cooler as I'm trying to do this. Maybe I'm using the wrong hand. Yeah, let's do this. Hold the cable out of the way with one hand, and then there you go. Much better. Yeah, so the eight pins, it's two fours you stick together. Yeah, so that powers the CPU. Uh, let's go ahead and plug in external power. I'm leaving it off at the moment because we still have to plug this guy in. So 6 plus 2, you stick the 2 and the 6 together, and it only goes in one way. All the, all the power um, connectors have this little um, kind of little retention mechanism that uh, clips onto a bit of plastic on the connector. So when you take this out, you have to squeeze it as you pull. Let's get you to go in there. Yeah, nice. Okay. So I need to switch my monitor here to HDMI and find an HDMI cable down here. Yeah. And most graphics cards still have at least one HDMI. That's in. We're hitting the main power switch on the power supply. And then I'm going to jump the power switch pins, which are right here. They're labeled here on the motherboard what they are. You can also find it in the motherboard manual. But gen what you need to do is just connect these two pins right here together to get it to switch on. So we're just looking to get uh, video on the screen over here. Let's see. When you first turn a computer on, it's not uncommon for it to take a little while before you get video. Just kind of be patient with it. Yeah, they didn't actually take very long. Blue light means video's coming. Tough gaming. Okay. So shows the motherboard, shows the CPU, the RAM, and our M.2 solid state drive. New CPU installed. Press F1 to enter setup. It's complaining I don't have a keyboard, but didn't need a keyboard for this. So you can either hit the main power button over here to switch it off, or the switch, or you can touch the two power pins together, and it should power off. There you go. So this is working. Um, at least well enough uh, where I'm comfortable uh, putting it together. Okay, so like I said, on the power connectors, they have a little 
thing right here you have to squeeze as you pull. Same thing. Squeeze, pull, squeeze, pull. So that can just sit over there. The motherboard and everything was going to move over there. Actually, wait a minute. The graphics card does not need to be in there right now. You have to kind of, I don't know if you can see this, but right down there, there's a little retention thing you have to push down, usually with a screwdriver, because it's difficult to get your hand in there, especially after you put the cooler on, but that's how you take the graphics card out. It, it kind of locks it in there so it doesn't just fall out. Uh, okay, so this, right over there, motherboard box. I can actually put some of this stuff in. Might still need the manual. Those are motherboard screws. Okay. Or not motherboard screws, power supply screws. So these is this is the excess screws for the original retention mechanism. This is an additional riser and screw for another M.2 solid state drive. I'll just kind of screw those together and set them in there. Uh, excess cooler hardware. And let's see. This stuff, I tell people just to keep for like 30 days or whatever the return period is, just because it's easier to send things back to uh, retailers if you if you have the the original boxes. How we doing, everybody? Uh, Azrock B550M Pro 4. I've had good results with Azrock motherboards. I haven't bought one in a little while. Asus for for a while there was was a little bit overly expensive. So for budget builds, more like budget conscious builds, I would very often um, get an Azrock motherboard. They're fine. They're. I mean, I, I don't think I've had a a problem with one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's see. Is a so Alex says is a 1080 P good still for AAA titles. 1080P is a resolution. I think you might be asking about maybe a, a GTX 1080, and the answer to that is kind of. Um, I, th I think a 1080 can run most games pretty well, but that all, that all depends on. It's not just like AAA games, and that's that's all you have to concern yourself with. You you also have to think about things like um, the um, the resolution you're running at and what frame rate you're looking for. Those those are much more important to uh, to consider. Why did the person get a so Pimpin asks why did the person get a two terabyte SSD why not a one terabyte and a big hard drive and a CPU or GPU upgrade? Some people don't want to be bothered having more than one drive. I mean I the the way I, I've had several clients um, it's it's kind of on the rare side but a lot of people don't want to have the bother of having to remember what drive something is on. Um, and yes, there are ways to like mitigate that, like where you can um, you can direct your your like your desktop and your pictures and your video, the folders and windows, to that extra drive, and it's kind of it's transparent to the end user because they just they click on the file explorer and click on downloads and there's their downloads and click on photos and there's their photos. But I, I've I've had some people just when I tell them I'm going to do that, they're like, well, how will I find it if I lose it? It's like, how would you lose it? it I don't, I don't know. Um, but yeah, uh, that, that would have been an option to get a one terabyte and then like a two terabyte hard drive for, you know, storage of games and things like that. That would have been an option. Yeah. Probably, I mean, we could have, I mean, we could have ended up saving maybe 40 or 50 bucks doing that. And that could have been put toward another upgrade. It's just, 
I don't know. I, I kind of like having everything on solid, solid state drives. Um, personally, also, I, I do have hard drives that I, um, that I use, but uh, yeah. Uh, case. Let's get the case out. So many boxes. Abby's still uh, still working on putting her stuff away. She's got this new, um, well, it, it's not new. She's had it, but a uh, display case for all her characters, which is a lot of the stuff here. So all this stuff will eventually end up there and be all pretty. Uh, let's see if we can cut this open. They opted for the black case. When I sent them the link to buy it, I told them, you know, there's a white version of this case, and I don't think it was more expensive. If you'd like a white case, get yourself a white case. But looks like they just stuck with the black one. And I've built in this case a few times now in previous streams. talking about only having two RAM sticks. If, if, you, if you build a compact system, that's pretty common. Um, ITX builds and even a lot of micro ATX motherboards will only have two RAM slots. But I mean, that's, that's generally enough. If, as long as you buy the amount of RAM you think you'll need at the beginning, then you wouldn't have to add more RAM, so the two are okay. So the uh, the thumb screws on here, usually on thumb screws, they'll have it where you can stick a, uh, a screwdriver in to turn it if it was difficult. These were a little bit difficult to turn and there's no, no place to put a screwdriver. So this thing's got a case fan in the front, or a case fan in the back, and a case fan in the front. Front connectors. Those are out of the way so we can get to the three and a half inch drive bay where they keep all the screws and stuff. So this is where you would add a three and a half inch drive or a two and a half inch drive. You can screw it in with these right here. We don't have any of those. Uh, Three and a half or two and a half inch drives. Stick this, stick these cables in the front for now. Let's see what we got in here. Golden Gamer, Michael, I heard something pop in my laptop. What do I do? Is it still working? That's my first question to you. Does it still work? I mean, a pop could have been your uh, your corn pops in the morning. Okay. I don't use these zip ties because once you put them on, you have to cut them off if you want to change something. I don't like doing that, so I don't use them. Okay, so it looks like some thumb screws, some coarse threaded screws, and then some slightly different coarse threaded screws. Oh no, they're the same. Never mind. Uh, fine threaded screws, probably for adding drives, like um, two and a half inch drives. Extra risers, which we may need. 
some washers. Not sure what those are for. And then fan screws. Okay. Nothing else? Okay. Well, we don't need the fan screws because we're not adding more fans. We don't need the washers. Probably won't need the risers. Probably won't need these because these are for like two and a half inch drives or if, you know, anyway, five and a quarter inch drives um, would need that. I can't imagine what these are for. Just extra thumb screws. So yeah, then we got a, a whole crap ton of um, coarsely threaded screws. And that tells me that the risers take coarsely threaded screws. Okay, turn this thing around and we'll lay it down. How are we doing, guys? Multiple monitors fixing cable manage. Yeah, I, I'm I, I'm bad about cable management. Um, I got all kinds of stuff just under my desk. The thing is, uh, maybe this is an excuse <laughs> for why I don't cable manage my desk very well, is because I do move things around a lot. I change things a lot. Whereas I think most people, once they get everything set up the way that they want it, they're not going to probably move anything for a year. So why not like tidy thing up and make sure it's it's all all pretty? Uh, 240 millimeter AO, AIO is good. My opinion on on water cooling is that it's uh, it's not a good idea because it has too many different extra things to go wrong. And those too many things are two extra things. The pump can fail. The pump that moves the liquid can fail. And the liquid can leak or otherwise dry up. And it's I've seen so many all-in-one coolers fail. And it can actually end up killing the CPU. Because if people don't realize what's happening, I've had so many people tell me that um, the computer just shuts down while I'm using it. And now I just turn it back on and I keep using it. Well, if you do that once every 15 minutes for for months on end, your CPU is going to die. It's going to overheat because it's turning itself off. The computer's turning itself off because the CPU is overheating. Just, I, I'll, I'll, I install on one coolers for people if they want me to, but I don't recommend them. Uh, I do already have the 5800X. Yeah, it's it's installed in the motherboard already. It's it's over here underneath the cooler. We did that at the beginning of the stream. Uh, Michael Florendo. Uh, oh, talking to somebody else about an RTX 3050. Yeah, 3050. If you can save a little bit more money or spend your money differently when you're building, get yourself up to a 3060 or a 3060 Ti. Um, it's, the 3050s just I mean it's it's okay if that's what you can afford and that's really all you can do I mean that's what you can that's what you can afford but you know try and get up to that 3060 3070 would be the next um, beneficial uh, jump up as far as price versus performance so this this motherboard has a has a backplate um, I'm sorry an IO shield we have to install so the idea of this is it um, you've got your you've got your motherboard and it's got its connectors on the back, and this thing's getting heavy because that's a beefy ass cooler. So it kind of it kind of does that. So that's that's basically what it does. It just fills in the air gaps. So to get that into the case, you kind of stick it into the corners and push a little bit. And go to the other side, walk your fingers, push, push till it snaps. And you can look on the outside. That's in there. Just be careful. It, it's it's got little bits of sharp metal that's uh, very easy to cut yourself on. I think these risers are okay. Um, so before you put your motherboard in, most cases will have risers are already in there. So it's just little raising things uh, that the motherboard sits on. It's it's designed so that the motherboard doesn't fit, sit directly on the case and like short off the bottom of the motherboard uh, on metal. 
So we got one, two, three, and it matches up with one, two, three holes there. We've got one, two, three risers, one, two, three holes, and another three along the bottom, which matches up. We're good. So if I do that, yeah, I think I think we'll be okay here. I am going to um, I'm disconnecting the CPU power from the uh, from the power supply. I'm going to plug the two. Bring this back out. I'm going to plug the eight pin, the two fours we're sticking together, in now, just because after I get this in the case. I would be very much restricted by how much room I have. So this is going to go, going to feed this through that hole in, in the uh, the back of the case. But let's go ahead and get this in there. So yeah, you basically just look at the uh, the holes in the motherboard, and you drag this thing over so that the connectors go through the IO shield like that and then when you look through the holes in the motherboard you'll be able to see the risers and this needs to go up a little bit just a little yeah and it drops in and a lot of cases have this instead of a screw hole there'll be a, a little pin that sticks through right there so when you get it in there it kind of locks it in place it makes it a little bit easier okay so i'm looking through the holes and the risers are a little bit to the right of the hole so if i push just a little bit on the motherboard to the back. That is much closer to properly aligned. Same thing at the bottom. A little bit more. And it's it's not unusual for the motherboard to, to spring back because you're pushing basically on the IO shield. So you may have to push it, like actively push it as you put the screws in, or at least get one or two in once you've got the alignment, which you think is correct. So there's... There's nine holes in the motherboard, but one of them is taken up with that pen in the middle, so we need eight screws. There should be eight there. Yeah, I think there's nine actually. Oh, sorry, I bumped the I bumped the, uh, the microphone, everybody. It's right here next to my head. Michael F Florendo is a 12400F, a good pair for a B660M. Yeah, I mean, that would work. The uh, the B series from Intel CPUs, they don't allow you to overclock the processor, but that's not an overclocking processor. If it ended to, if it had a K in the name of it, you could overclock it. But yeah, that's a good that's a good um good combo. Uh that that's actually the CPU I was thinking about putting in the next build. Um I don't know if I'm going to have time to, I'm not going to have time today. Uh, to uh, to do the build on stream or the the researching of the build on stream, but yeah, that uh, that that twelve four hundred is is one hell of a well priced um, CPU. Okay, so I've got one screw in there. It's not tight yet. What I'm going to do is push the motherboard to the back. So that the risers line up with the holes on the top and the bottom. And I'm going to tighten this one down. That should keep the motherboard from going back again. And allow me to just go through and put all the screws in. We're getting a lot of people asking questions and, uh, and uh, posting in chat. This is great. I'm sorry if I if I can't read everything while I do this. So y'all answer each other's questions as best as possible, please. You know, give answer answer questions and give opinions and stuff. It's great. Thank you. Start. See, I already tightened that one. 
I'm going to go ahead and tighten down the rest of them as I put them in because at this point the motherboard's in correctly, like alignment-wise, so I shouldn't have any trouble getting the others in. Knock on wood. Where's wood? There's wood. Yeah. And we're actually really close to uh, being done with this. We really just have to put in the, gra the graphics card and the, the power supply. But motherboard's in. Let's lay this thing up. And I'm going to run this cable through that upper left corner through to the back. It's real close to coming out here. Oh, come on. Get through there. All right, there we go. Let me pull it through. Just like that. Let's see. Let's find a place to plug this fan into. Looks like we got two spots here. One labeled system fan and the other pump. We're going to go into system fan. So this is a three pin fan header. Um, you can plug a three pin or even a two pin fan header into a four pin fan header. They they fit. There, there's little bits. Of, there's a little bit of plastic that kind of gets it in just right. Kind of stuff that cable right there. Okay. Um, and this front fan. Where are we going to plug it in? There's a chassis fan right here. We can plug it into. Chassis fan two. I think we'll go with that. We could also we could put it up 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 here into the CPU optional, but that's a little bit far. Um, let's see. Undo its twisty tie. I like using twisty ties. I keep these, and uh, this is how I, I hold down most cables. Just little twisty ties because you if you want to move them, you untwist them, you move them, and you use them again. I really don't like the um, um, the zip ties. Okay, so there's a hole in here right there. I'm going to try and go through with this. Grab it and pull it through the other side. Someone having high temps? So this, I'll kind of bring under here, through there, and then we can turn it and plug it in, just like that. Okay, so both the fans are plugged in. All the fans are plugged in, actually. And this is going to come down and plug in where the power supply goes. So yeah, as long as your your case has a an opening at the bottom where air can come in, you want to make it. You can put your power supply in there so that the fan is facing that. And what that'll do is it'll bring cool air from the back of the or from the the bottom of the case in through here, and then exhaust it out the back of the uh, of the case. Let's go ahead and plug in this CPU into CPU one. So then it will go in kind of like that. Yeah. Just like that. Okay. And it came with four four uh, four silver screws. Someone mentioned to me the other day that I uh, I used mismatching mismatching screw, and I'm wondering if they mean this. I mean if it comes with silver screws and your case is black and the power supply is black, is putting silver screws really mismatched? Should I put black screws? 
Personally, I don't care about that. <laughs> I guess some people do. What do y'all think? Black screws or silver screws? As I put in the silver screws. I did end up cutting myself, by the way. Right there. So with this, I'm just starting each of them, and then I'll go back and tighten them down once I'm sure they're all in proper alignment. Because sometimes you have to move it around the power supply in order to get the screw holes to, to match up. Let go through. Yeah. Okay. So they're all started. Now I'll just go back and tighten them down. Somebody said go for black. Reagan said black. Another person says black. Well, they're silver. I think it looks nice. I mean, they came with the power supply, which is black. Is that is that really wrong? Probably not. Okay, so... 24 pin power will go probably right through here that should be approximately where it is I think I feel it let's see are you right there yeah right through here and this channel right here is meant to uh, have this fed into it which we may or may not do let's look and see we also need to yeah let's do it let's go ahead and put it through I don't, well, let's check these first before we go making a commitment like that. What are you caught on? One of the, the front connectors got caught on something in here. There we go. It was the front audio connector got caught. So... USB 3.0. Where where does it need to go? It needs to go right there next to the 24 pin power. Sometimes there's another three um, USB 3.0 down here, but not on this motherboard. So, okay, so USB 3.0 we want to have out of that one, so it can go directly through there. And this guy just fell right out. But the rest of these will go to the bottom. Yeah, we'll go to the bottom of the motherboard. Don't need that. Let's undo this one. And we'll see about getting this in approximately right. We still have to connect it on the other side and kind of adjust it, but just temporarily we'll do that. And these will come in from the bottom. And graphics. The graphics card will be right here. I guess it makes sense to have the, the graphics card th come through here too. Let's undo that. So we'll do the graphics through there as well. there, that through there. I wonder how my battery on my phone's doing. Uh, yes, it's hot everywhere, isn't it? Except where it's not. There's there's some places that are just getting flooding right now and other places need rain real bad. It's like Hard stuff. It's hard stuff, y'all. Okay, so these these are for the power button, the reset switch, and power LED. And these will all need to come in from the bottom here. So kind of through here. Let's see. Okay, 
Okay, so those will connect to the motherboard. This guy is almost always, so the front audio cable connections will come up, hopefully fit through here somewhere, because the connector for it's just on the other side here. Yeah, go ahead and plug it in. So the front audio connector has one missing pin that matches up with a connector with one, miss one missing pin. So you can't put it in wrong, at least not easily. That's in. Let's see. All right, let's plug in the. We already plugged in the eight pin up here in the corner. Got that out of the way. But we still need to plug in the 24 and 24 pin connector and the graphics. Let's get the 24 pin on top. All right, so you stick the 4 and the 20 together. Hey, 420, y'all. Nice. Turn it and plug that in. Okay. And then the USB 3.0, it's got, um, I think it's 20 pins, if I remember right. There's a little bit of plastic right there that matches up with a, a notch in the connector, and that's how you know how you're putting it on right. So I'm kind of just over the top and push. Yeah, just like that. And we got graphics power, which we'll plug in, but before that, we need to deal with these front connectors. So this is par power LED. The LEDs, either power or if you have a hard drive LED or drive LED, um, there's a minus and a plus. You need to make sure that the plus goes to the left side of the, the motherboard. And the power LED pins are the top two left pins in this uh, series of several pins. And th these are, are generally... Um, uh, standardized, but not not completely. Reset switch. Reset switch is the bottom right two, and power switch is the top right two. And the orientation, like there's no per polarity on the uh, the switch, the power switch and the reset switch. All they do is connect a circuit, so there's no negative or positive you have to worry about. All right, so we'll put the excess kind of towards the bottom. And then it's graphics card time. Let's lay this thing down. So the graphics card is going to go right here. It's a two-slot graphics card requiring two screws and two slot areas. So we need to remove two of these little slot covers. And these generally just come out like that. And I'll put those in the motherboard box. But yeah, graphics card. Looks like y'all doing a good job of talking amongst yourselves. Sorry, I, I, I sometimes have more time to talk to y'all while I do things like this. All right, so we did this before at the beginning of the stream, and it was easier to see because it was outside of the case, but you put it so that the faceplate on the graphics card goes to the left of the motherboard's edge, but not on the outside of the case. And that, if you do that, the slot and the card should match up otherwise. Sometimes you have to work around um, other screws here. So if it gets caught, kind of just look over here. Okay, that just, just about fell in into the slot. Extra push, it's in. And thumb screws. Can I do them with my thumb? Yes, one was successful. Two successful.
Y'all are doing a great job hanging out. Oh, hang on. Um, I'm going to play something for y'all. This is going to be fun. We can stay up late, swapping manly stories, and in the morning, I'm making waffles. My favorite. Yeah. Who doesn't like waffles? Probably lots of people, right? Okay. Uh, will you come up enough for me to plug you in? Let's see. Is it just not long enough? Okay, that's that cable's not long enough to make uh, the complete journey. We're going to go with this one. So I stuck the 6 and the 2 together, and we're just going to get them plugged into the graphics card. Yeah, that, that'll be fine. And that can just kind of sit right there. And then the excess I'll pull through. But yeah, that's that's everything hooked up. We should be able to just uh, connect power to the outside and turn her on. Clean up over here a little bit first, though. Put stuff in the motherboard box. So extra risers, extra screws for the motherboard. Uh, question mark what that is. Oh, it's just a, never mind. Just an empty bag. Excess, uh, excess, motherboard manual. Yeah, it's just extra plastic. Okay. Oh, I forgot about my coffee. Mmm. Yes. So I can I can clean up the cables a little bit more. Um, let's go pull that through. Stick this guy over here. And we'll do this before we turn it on. We're pretty sure it's gonna work because we we hooked most of it up outside of the case and we got video. pulled through so graphics card we can pull through the USB 3.0 a little bit and the 24 is pulled as much as it can be so yeah that'll go there and then we can put this strap through and strap these guys down and keyboard are these two little wireless dongles I'm not gonna get an Ethernet yet and need a Oop. stay up there whenever you're plugging in a monitor Make sure you're plugging it into the graphics card if you have a graphics card. Because otherwise, if you plug it up here, it probably won't work. And if you're lucky, it'll give you a message saying, hey, plug that into your graphics card. All right, main power's on. Uh, yeah, we should be able to just hit the power button. I didn't press it hard enough. <laughs> I suppose I ought to go wash my hands too. Got dried blood on me. Okay, looks like we're getting video back here. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is a good opportunity for me to plug in my plug in my phone before the battery on it dies. I'm using a Galaxy S22 as my uh, my head mounted cam. I'm about to switch out for a Galaxy S5 to do just that specifically because my daughter has one, a Galaxy S5, and it has a really good um, camera built into it. She doesn't use it for for camera, so I'm going to swap her out with a 
another phone from about the same time where it's a fine phone. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just the camera and it's not that great. Okay, powered on. All right, hang on a second. I'm gonna put y'all on a put the camera on a tripod. All right, so it's powering up. Good stuff. Generally aim this at a screen. A little closer. Yeah, that'd be good. All right, so BIOS is in recovery mode, pressing F1 on the keyboard. Yeah, so there's our 2 terabyte solid state drive. There's our two 16 gigabyte sticks of RAM. The fans are spinning. It shows the speeds they're running at, which is nice. There's the CPU. Um, I'm not going to turn on DOCP yet. In DOCP, uh, it'll run the RAM at the, the speed it's rated at. Right now, it's running at 2400 megahertz. It'll overclock to 3600 megahertz. But um, probably going to need a BIOS upgrade on this computer anyway, and we'll turn it on after that. Um, and she wants Windows 11, which I have somewhere. Yeah, it's on. It's on this flash drive. Does anyone know the search to put into Google to to find uh, the installer for Windows 11 for free? Anyone who's watched my stream before and has seen me um, talk about it probably knows. But uh, let me switch to the center here and let's see we'll open up a browser tab so the Google search to download Windows 10 or download Windows 11 from Microsoft for free is download Windows and then what you want so Windows 11 that and the first link should be this if it's not the first link just look for this link you click it and there's an option to install it just straight away on the computer you're on Oh, come on, Microsoft website, come up. There it is. So you can just install Windows 11 or Windows 10 or whatever you want to do right from here, but you can also do the create the installation media option. Just click that, run through it. Know that um, any flash drive you give it to create the Windows installer will be erased um, in that process. So just know that so you're not deleting stuff. But if you wanted Windows 10, it would be download Windows... 10. The link looks different. This uh, the Windows one for Windows 10 says ISO in the in the uh, description. I don't know why they did that, but they did. Um, click that and then wait several seconds for the Microsoft website to load for some reason. Really? That usually comes up nice and fast. Uh, okay, yeah, and then you get create Windows 10 installation media. You click that. You follow the directions. You it creates you uh, an install file or install USB. But I plug that into the to the front of the computer into one of the USBs in the front. So if I do control alt delete on the keyboard or if I press the uh, the reset button, it'll restart the computer and it should just see that it, that installer on USB and start the install process. I'm hoping we can get through the install and, and cover most of the driver installation stuff before I have to go. Okay, we detected a new processor. Uh, it's talking about TPM. Uh, please, yes, to otherwise, please uh, pr press Y to reset the FTPM. We want to do that. Um, and what this is, uh, the FTPM or the TPM is where encryption data is stored. Um, so if you if you have your drive encrypted or anything encrypted on the on your computer, if you clear this, it will clear the record of that, and then you would have to then provide uh, like a 48 digit code in order to get it back. So just be be not you know careful about that kind of thing. I'm gonna say yes just because this is a, a brand new system. There's there's nothing to lose. Uh, yeah. Um, 
Ah, Foxtrot Gaming. Would an i3-12100 be good for VR? Not, probably not. Um, I think that's a four-core CPU. Um, it's not horrible. Am I right about that? Is the 12100 a four-core? If that's a two-core, that's horrible. Don't even buy that. You know, save save up an extra 40 bucks or whatever it is and get a, get a four-core. All right, well, we got the, uh, got the installer here. I'm hit, hitting next. Install now. Okay, so this is important. Um, it asks you for a 25-digit product key. You do not have to give it one. If you've already bought one and you got a good deal on it, go ahead and you can go ahead and do it if you want to, but you can do it after always. If you tell you you don't have a product key, it will then ask you if you... If I use the right mouse to click it, when you hit I don't have a product key, it will ask you what version of Windows you want. Um, and it's basically Home or Pro. There, there's lots of others here. Most people I have just on Pro, or I'm sorry, just on Home, because it's not worth the extra expense. Um, but whenever you get into Windows, it will eventually say, hey, you need to put give us a 25-digit uh, a key, and then you can do it. And there's a link. You just follow it, and it, it, uh, it does it for you. But next... Agree to giving away the second born, and there's our two terabyte um, solid state drive. And I'll just click next. It will create the partitions it needs to. Yeah, but if you're looking for a copy of Windows 10 or a Windows 11, or if you need an older copy of Windows, if you go into Google and do a search for whatever copy of Windows you want to get, along with the word cheap, you'll find lots of options. Um, the the website I, t I tend to go to is g2a.com. Um, and you can get a copy of, of Windows on there um, for like 30 bucks, um, as opposed to paying 100 or more from Microsoft or from a, like a, a more standard store. You can also get a, a cheap copies of just about any other um, software, you know, Office, any kind of game. Um, it, it's it, it's all there. And I've had good results with G2A.com. A few times I've they've they've sent me a code that didn't work, but I basically just said, you know, went to the support said, hey, that didn't work. Can you please send me another one? And within well, like 15 or 20 minutes, they sent me another one. So and that worked. So I mean, that's what I generally go for. Wow, yeah, it's already 85%. This is going pretty quick. But we, I mean, we are dealing with um, a USB 3.0 flash drive, which I think is pretty fast. I don't remember the manufacturer, but also this is going on to an M.2 NVMe fourth gen um, or fourth, yeah, fourth gen solid state drive. So it's going to be a nice speedy system, not to mention the 8x uh, CPU cores. G2A code is a gray sector market, though. Yes, that's true. And gray means it's like, is it completely legit? Is it is it not legit? It's kind of in a gray area. I am perfectly fine working in the gray area. Um, if 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 you're not comfortable with that, don't do it. If if your if your company wouldn't uh, wouldn't look kindly on that, don't do it. You know, if if they want you to buy directly from manufacturers, do that. And you know, there's that's an extra expense. But um, you know, if buy whatever you're comfortable with. Switch screens, please. Yes, I'm sorry. Let me hit my. Uh, POV. Y'all couldn't see any of that. I'm an idiot. Well, I, I, I clicked next a few times, um, and I talked about what I saw. Sorry. Thank you for... Meaningless. Thank you, Meaningless, for telling me to do that. I would eventually got it, <laughs> realized it, but it could have been several minutes or the rest of the stream. So the computer detected um, hardware and it's rebooting to continue the setup. The price, the price for, for all of this hardware was, um, I believe, $1,450. That was before tax. Matt, I, I, I can't think what a PCPP list is. You have to help me with that one. 
Okay, so we need to, let's see, say yes to the United States. Yes to a US keyboard, skip second keyboard. And then it's gonna insist that we connect to the internet. I should have I should have just gone ahead and connected it. I knew I was gonna install Windows 11 before I put this back there. Okay, so it should get internet access here briefly. All right, connected, good. Uh, next, it's gonna check for updates. So Windows 11 and Windows 10 for that matter, if you, uh, if you give it an internet connection at this point, it will insist that you uh, create a Microsoft account and connect it to an on online Microsoft account. But there's, there's a trick to that. So on Windows 10, you just tell it, I don't have internet and it says, hey, are you sure? And you say, yes, I'm sure, and then it lets you create a user account that's just on the computer. Um, the, um, let me do something else. Windows 11, you have to do something a little bit tricky. Um, I'm looking up something on my, my email. Okay, name the device. Uh, we're going to go with skip, because I don't know what they want theirs called. And if you skip it, it'll just create like a generic name for the computer name. Uh, if, if they want to change that, they can do that. It's, it's in settings. Okay, but at this point, there's no option to, to not give it an internet connection. So what you generally do here is you take away the internet connection and then hit the back button and then it'll realize hey this guy doesn't have an internet connection and it will um it'll allow you to create a, a local account so you can do that by just disconnecting the cable you can also do it by i believe it's shift f10 yes and that opens a, a command prompt where you can type in ip config space forward slash release and that will release the ip address which breaks the internet connection. So then if I hit back, there it goes. So it just asks you. And their name is, I believe that's right. Let me see. Yes. Username, no password. And for the privacy stuff, I leave everything I, disk, I, I uncheck everything but diagnostic data and location. So all that off, except, and now it's going to start creating the, uh, the user account. And since since we uh, we disconnected, we we released the IP address. We're going to need to go in and, and uh, renew it. It's going to be the same command, but uh, with instead of release at the end, it's going to be renew, and that'll reconnect us. We could also disconnect the cable and plug it back in, and that would also do it. And I would probably do that as opposed to doing what I did with the Shift F10 and running that command, except that where I have the computer right now is kind of in a corner, and it's a pain in the ass to get to. So um, I don't want to do that. So I can see y'all. What are y'all typing? Catherine over here giving uh, giving advice about CPU upgrades and doing BIOS up, uh, updates first. Yeah, that that's that is a very good thing to do. Uh, BIOS update before you try upgrading the CPU. Ah, we're getting a msteams.exe bad image from something to do with teams and okay well I don't really care about teams and probably a reinstall of the team software would fix it but this thing is just one thing after another okay armory crate this is good so if you have an asus motherboard it will generally pop up and say hey do you want to go get the armory crate say yes to that because what it'll do, it takes several minutes usually, but what this does, this armory crate, is it will look at the 
the motherboard you have and automatically go get and install all the drivers for it. And it will usually also, oh, I did not give it an internet connection back. Uh, let's, let's go do that. So if I click start and do a search for CMD and just press enter, we'll open the command prompt and then we'll do IP config space forward slash renew. And that will go get a new IP address, which is 0 0.114. Not that y'all needed to know that, but so the armory crate, there it goes. It picked up the internet connection and we're, we're good to go. All right, other Windows 11 things. I'm going to right click on start and go to, no, I right click off of start just on a blank spot and go to taskbar settings. I'm going to turn off task view, which most people don't use, widgets, which most people don't want, and chat. And also taskbar behavior, I'm going to change it from center, where it's in the center right now, to left. So just, I like it better like that. I know it's it's probably good to go with the new way of things, and sometimes I do. But uh, yeah, not, not on Windows 11 yet. So right-clicking on start we can go to device manager and oh the armory crates already opening really that was fast or are you tricking me ah, no it's it's still doing stuff did task manager open I don't think so not task manager right click device manager there's device manager okay so yeah, it looks like the the Wi-Fi isn't working at the moment. That's what that network controller is on other devices. Anything you see in other devices, it just doesn't have drivers for. But that's what the Armory Crate is going to do. Uh, install Armory Crate prerequisite service. Yeah, let's do that. Do do all those Armory Crate pre prerequisite services. Thank you. Um, I, I don't think it it, it's, it had asked that before. Usually it just does it. Hmm. Yeah, that's another good good uh, suggestion, Catherine. Make sure the RAM you have is compatible with the new one. And I, that would mostly come down to like DDR3 versus DDR4. DDR4 took over in 2012-ish, but before that, if your computer's older than that, it probably has DDR3 that won't even fit in a newer computer. So that would be another expense you would have to account for. Armory Crate is bloatware in my opinion. I don't install all the things. Um, when it gets to the point where it asks you where to install things, it automatically checks lots of different software uh, that you don't need on your computer, which is absolutely bloatware. But just having this section right here for installing drivers I think is worth it. And if you don't want it on your computer after the fact, if you re remove the Armory Crate, it uh, still keeps all the drivers it installed and the BIOS update it did. Defaulter, hey, do you think Gigabyte B450 Gaming X is good for 5600G? Yeah, I think that would be compatible. Um, but do what uh, do what Catherine said and make sure you upgrade your BIOS to the latest version just to be sure it's it's going to work with the new CPU. I've got to go in about 35 minutes, maybe 40. So I don't think we're going to have time to um, do the list for the for the new computer that I'm building next live on stream. Prioritizing the GPU, yeah, that's a good idea. If, if you're gaming, the GPU is, is pretty much the what you should you know spend probably the majority of your money on, or a good portion of it, as much as you can. Yeah, for a gaming computer, I would say minimum something with four CPU cores, a CPU with four CPU cores, minimum. Um, 16 gigabytes of RAM. You can sometimes get away with eight, but go ahead and get 16. And then you know, as much as you can spend on the graphics card as possible. Up to like a 3070, or whatever they come up with a 4070. 
uh, and sometimes the the 80 series is a good deal as well. And right now the 90 series is kind of a good deal. The 3090s they dropped them to like 11 or 1200 dollars, which is really not much of a premium to pay for the extra performance you get. See what I meant about the armory crate taking a long time? It does, it takes a long time. Installation complete. Okay, we will scroll down and agree. Scroll down and privacy policy, sure. Skip that, skip the logging in, and the tools are over on the left. Little tools icon. So drivers, it's gonna... Unknown error with the content, please try to reinstall Armory Crate. That's the first time I've seen that. What, so it's just broken? I think the armory crate's having problems. Let's try a system restart. Matley says, aren't the 13th gen and AM5 coming at the same time? If you're waiting, might as well see the reviews and see which is better. Yeah, I mean, the, the 13th gen um, from Intel and the AM5 stuff is definitely coming this year. I think they just announced that on August 29th, AMD is going to have a thing where they um, they like introduce the uh, the AM5 um, new Ryzen's, and Intel probably do the same thing about the same time. Uh, so, msteams.exe is just having a bad time. Lots of bad images. Okay, so click start. Oh, see Armory Crate right here. Let's just launch the Armory Crate and see what happens. Uh. Uh, skip. No, I don't want to do that. Don't want to do that either. So it's just sitting here loading. I can see where it has drivers back here. I don't think it's going to work. Now, unknown error with the content. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's take that off. So I'm going to right-click on it, and we'll do uninstall. Yes, I'm sure I want to uninstall it. So armory crate's gone. Right. Well, let's... Uh, Let's continue on doing other things. No, I don't want to make my experience better. I want to get to www.ninite.com and never use you again, Edge. Um, so ninite.com, if you haven't seen this before, it's great. Anything you see here, if you check, anything that you want, it's all free. I just want Chrome here at, at the moment. You click get your Ninite and you let it run and make changes, yes, and it will go get those programs and install them for you. So that will give us Chrome. Um, let's see. We need to go to the Motherboard Maker's website and get drivers and BIOS updates manually because the Armor Crate did not work. Uh, so it is a tough gaming B550 plus Wi-Fi that looks correct okay so I'm going to take that and Chrome should be installed at this point yes close out a nine night launch Chrome and we will paste and go there close out edge accepting 
support drivers and utilities. Let's go ahead and switch over to BIOS and get the latest one downloaded. So the latest one is version 2803 and back to drivers and tools. Windows 11, we need drivers for the Wi-Fi. That's wireless. Probably also need the chipset drivers. What's under show all? Okay, just a different version. Sound is probably working. Yeah, sound is working. Don't need the VGA drivers. Probably could use Bluetooth. And then there's, there's the Armory Crate if we wanted to re-download it. I think we'll do okay with these. Uh, so yeah, let's show in folder and we will extract them. Uh, extract all. So that's the BIOS. We don't want to do that quite yet. Let's do this next one. Extract all. This is for the Wi-Fi and we'll run ASUS setup. There is a tool for eight for gigabyte motherboards. I forget what it's called. If someone remembers that, please post that in chat. If you did a Google search for like Armory Crate for Gigabyte, it would probably bring it up. Did that really install? Let's let's right click on Start and go to Device Manager and see if that networking thing is still there. Yeah. So what under the devices it had network adapter there, so that got installed. That's good. Uh, the PCI encryption decryption controller I think will get taken care of by the chipset driver, but we'll see. Let's extract that out and run ASUS setup. Yeah, thriving entrepreneur, I, I kind of agree with that. Eight cores is, is the sweet spot at the moment. If you can get eight uh, performance cores with uh, some uh, some slower cores, that's even better. That's the Intel stuff. It doesn't look like AMD is going to do like performance versus efficiency cores, at least not so far that I've, I've heard. But that's okay, too. I mean, whatever works for you, right? Oh yeah, I'm going to let it install all that stuff. So it's going to install several drivers from that one uh, download. That's great. And what was that last thing? Um, Bluetooth. Yeah, let's, let's go ahead and get that extracting. Because there's a generic Bluetooth adapter just sitting up here not knowing what to do. It's got some kind of a bang on it. If you double click, you can you can generally get a code. So it's code 45. It just doesn't know what to do with it. But most of the time, if you have a problem like that, if you install the latest driver, it will take care of it. All right, so that's going. We can probably go ahead and run the Bluetooth driver as well at the same time. I don't imagine those two things would screw with each other. Oh, did it really fix it that quickly? Oh, I guess so. Well, it's just sitting there in the background installing Bluetooth stuff, apparently. And the AMD chipset stuff got done. So we can restart if we want to, or just click close. We're clicking close. And it installed a driver for the graphics card, but it's probably a couple months old. I'm going to go to NVIDIA, uh, the NVIDIA website. So NVIDIA drivers. A Google search for that generally brings you this result. So that's great. We'll do that. Ah, uh, no, not a Titan. We need GeForce, RTX 3000 series, 3060, and Windows 11. It doesn't say 3060 Ti in the list, but that's okay. It'll still work. It, it's all the same driver. Download, download, download. And I will let it run when it gets done doing its download thing.
Oh yeah, make those changes. Absolutely, put your stuff right there. Internet's fast, yeah, um, Reagan. Uh, it, it's it's a gigabit up and down. I think I can get two gigabit up and down here if I want to pay more money, but I don't think it's worth it. Most of the websites I download from or services I download from don't even come close to touching the one gigabit anyway. Uh, so graphics driver, I'm doing just the graphics driver, not the GeForce experience. I usually do custom next and perform a clean install. And what that does is it deletes any like previous changes to the NVIDIA configuration, which there shouldn't be here, but I, I, I do that just just out of uh, out of habit at this point, I suppose. Mm. Oh, the date is wrong. Let's change the time and date. So I right-clicked on the, the clock and went to adjust time and date. And I'm going to turn off set time automatically and turn it back on, and it should figure it out. You would think that if it was set to get the time automatically, it would just happen, but sometimes it doesn't. Oh yeah, the time zone is central where we are. Okay, so the screen went black because it's, it's installing the drivers for the graphics card. Okay, so that's, that's good. Your connection is 300 megabits up and down. 300 megabits, I, I think I would be okay with, three, with 300 megabits up and down. That's that's quite a bit. Let's see. Okay, so install, that's good. All right. Well, uh, let's let's go back to the BIOS. So we got the BIOS here. I'm going to transfer this over to my Windows 11 flash drive, and we're going to restart the computer and load the BIOS. Pressing delete on the keyboard to get into the BIOS. We in? Good. Okay. So, BIOS updating on an Asus motherboard. Um, I don't see the option on the screen at the moment, but if I press F7 to get to advanced mode, which you can see at the bottom left there, it's slightly covered up by my, uh, by my thumbnail. But, there you go. So now we got tools. Go to tools, easy flash, utility, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm just burping all over the place. And it looks like you already found it. So if, if you don't see the, the BIOS flash immediately, look over here on the left and just try clicking one of the other drives it can see. But this is it here, the Tough Gaming B550 Plus Wi-Fi 2. Yes, uh... Okay, so this this is asking about BitLocker again. It's the same thing as before when we um, when we went into the BIOS. If you have um, encryption data stored on the motherboard in the TPU, this will clear it. So just know that there is none because we haven't encrypted anything. But what what it's telling you there is what you would need to do if you do have encryption information on the motherboard. You would most likely need to go in, turn off encryption, wait for that to decrypt everything on the drive then do your BIOS update after the BIOS update is done, go in and turn back on encryption. But yes, we want to read the file. And it says, are you sure? Yeah, we want to install version 2803. And at this point, um, while it's doing the BIOS flash, just don't touch anything. Um, no disconnecting or reconnecting of anything, no turning it off, leave it alone until it gets done. Let's see.
y'all talking about using the BIOS renaming stuff. Um, it's going by so fast. Were y'all talking about like BIOS recovery? Because that's what that renamer's for. If the BIOS gets screwed up, like if the power grew off right now or um, something went wrong, um, the computer probably wouldn't come back on and work. And the the idea behind BIOS recovery and that renamer is you use that renamer program to rename the um, the BIOS file a particular name that you then put at the root of a flash drive, like a USB flash drive, plug that into the back of the computer in a particular USB spot that's labeled. And with the computer off, you press a button on the back of the motherboard uh, right next to where you plugged in the USB with the, the flash on it, and it will reflash the BIOS with the, the computer not being on. So then when it gets done, you turn the computer on and your computer's back, which is really, really nice. Should have dual BIOS? It probably does. So even if we screwed up one, the other one would kick on. That's true. Yeah, BIOS is getting screwed up is, is not really a problem anymore. Yeah, there, there's so many ways to fix them if they do get screwed up that it's not even an issue. Back in the day, you would have to um, replace the, uh, the chip on the motherboard that had the BIOS on it or reprogram it. And sometimes you had to ship the motherboard back to the manufacturer, have them fix it for you, and then send it back. So we, we've come a long way in the last 20-plus uh, uh, years. Smile at TV, you should wait and uh, save more money. Um, the, the the jump from a 3050 to a 3060 in performance is is worth the extra money. Oh, boy, both. <laughs> Theopel says that's true. I mean, if, if you can get to a 3070, you're you're better off. The, the 70 series is is almost always like the the sweet spot as far as price versus performance. Hi, Trapeter Gamer. Why does my cat, <laughs> David says, why does my cat know when I open my laptop? Yeah, or they like to sit on top of it. it it's, uh, there, there, I think there's a couple of things going on there. The, the, the laptop is probably warm, which they like. Also, they get to annoy you. And I, I heard, I, I think I saw several TikToks about, um, if your cat does that, if it gets in way while you're working on your computer, if you give it a, a, a play laptop that's just meant for a kid uh, and set it down for the cat, the cat will sit on that keyboard or in front of that keyboard, and they call it mirroring, which um, I, I think I probably believe is a, is a real thing. I haven't tried it. I don't have a cat. Yeah, but heat and height are big things for cats. If, the, if it's hot, they're going to sit on it. If it's high, they're going to sit on it. They like to be high up. BIOS update successful will be reset. So it should just, yeah, it's just going to restart. And on this first reboot, it's not uncommon for the video to be gone for a while, a while several seconds, if not minutes. So just be patient with it. And also, the computer may power itself off and then come back on and do that a couple of times. Okay, video. we got video pretty quick there. So BIOS in recovery mode, so F1. So it, what, what that tells you is it reset all the, uh, the settings default. And that's why I didn't bother turning on DOCP before. Uh, but I'm going to enable DOCP if it'll let me click it. There we go. Profile number one. So it'll run the RAM at 3600 megahertz at these timings which is good. Let's see, what else should we do? I think that's it. Um, yeah, just save and exit. And it, it shows you a, like a list of what you changed or what it changed when you made the, the, the setting choice you did. The great thing about the DOCP is uh, it's like RAM overclocking that's already done for you. So you don't have to go through and mess with the individual settings and voltages and stuff like that.
Legendary Faker i3-12100 with 16 gigabytes of RAM on a 610 motherboard, 550 watt power supply. That would probably work. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not familiar with the 610 motherboard. It, it sounds like it's one of the lower end ones. But yeah, it would work. Did anyone look up if a 12100 is a, is a four core or a two core? I'm, I'm still, I'm curious about that. So I'm just doing a search for Intel 12100 processor. Okay, so the arc.intel.com says it is a four-core processor. I mean, a four-core processor, that's that's pretty much the minimum you want. Just don't get a two-core processor at this point. It'll be slow at the beginning, and it'll just get worse over time as things become more demanding. It's weird that MS Teams is having a problem. Um, having to say okay every time. Uh, let's go see about removing Teams. Uh, if I do a search for Teams, there's Microsoft Teams, and we can uninstall it. And that can be reinstalled. Uh, if, you, if you install like a, a newer version of Office, it'll put Teams back on. But uh, otherwise, do, did you really go away, Teams? Okay. So I'm just curious, if I restart this thing, will it still give me Teams errors? Uh, Pippin, why Win 11 games run slower on Windows 11? That's that's not uncommon for a new version of an operating system for Microsoft to perform worse initially than than the original or the the, the previous one. But that generally changes over time. And that's a combination of Microsoft making things more efficient, driver manufacturer, computer manufacturer like graphics card driver or graphics card makers making their graphics card drivers better and also games can be optimized better for for newer operating systems or different operating systems but that generally switches after, not too long after the new operating system comes out it'll start running at running things better okay no teams error um and i think that's everything i need to start wrapping up the stream i'd love to keep chatting and uh, go through the process of um, building a computer list with you all. I mean, a lot of you all have really good suggestions on parts, and you're really great about helping each other. And, you know, I think one day we should just... This is going to be fun. We can stay up late, swapping manly stories, and in the morning, I'm making waffles. My favorite. And the stories don't all have to be manual, uh, manly, I suppose. Looks like we've got uh, got some uh, got some women in here. But hey, women can be manly too. I mean, Pip and a lot of people tell me they're still running Windows XP. Stress test and drivers. I have not stress tested. That's a good point. We can do some stress testing. Drivers are all updated though. Um, we got them from the manufacturer's website for the motherboard and um, and the graphics card. But yeah, let's do some. Uh, Let's do some stress testing. Set that. Oh, God. Windows Chrome and setting it as default in Windows 11 is freaking ridiculous. Um, okay, so we need we need a program to stress test the GPU. We're going to go with... Um, the furry donut. What's the furry donut called? Furmark. So we will click on that and click on the download link. Get that going. Yes. Chrome, why are you not responding? What happened? Did a ad on this page mess you up? Probably. Okay, let's close out of Chrome. It's having a bad time. Most likely one of those ads screwed it up. 
All right, back to Chrome. And let's go get um, HW Info 64. And what, the, what this program does is it shows you the speeds and uh, temperatures everything's running at. Local download, yes, which we will show in folder. Show in folder, there we go. And extract. Get it going. Sensors only is what I choose because it, it this program will show you a whole bunch of information. All right, so that's going, and we also need something to stress test the CPU, which I just about always do Prime 95. This program is made to find uh, prime numbers, but it also uses the CPU mercilessly, so it's a good stress tester. Show in folder. Okay, so we got that going. We uh, are we not showing in folder? There it is. Extract. All right, so we're running Prime 95, and yes, I'm sure Windows doesn't know what to make of it. Just stress test, and I generally do blend, so that will stress test the CPU. The Fur mark will turn on, which renders the furry donut. And yeah, so if you scroll down, uh, CPU temperature is currently sitting at 66 degrees C. 67. Uh, and the other is the GPU, which is currently at 65 degrees C. So yeah, we're putting maximum stress. If I right click on start and go to task manager, we can see that it's under stress. So show more details in performance. So CPU is at 100% usage, RAM is at 99% usage, uh, disk is not doing too much, but uh, GPU is at 96, 97. And the GPU, it actually shows you the temperature here in Task Manager, which I wish they would also do for the CPU, but they just haven't done it yet. But the CPU is running at 4.6 uh, gigahertz. That's really good. Uh, CPU is at 61 degrees. So what happened there? It was at 60. It was higher in the 60s. What happened is the um, the fan, the fans on the, uh, the CPU cooler, saw that it was getting hot, so they they started spinning faster. And the the, uh, the GPU would do the same thing. The fans on it, as it gets warm, will spin faster to help keep it cool. Oh no! There's porn spam. I'm on it, y'all. Okay, that should have cleaned up the other uh, porn spam, although it could come back. Someone is here dropping off a computer. I will be back.
Speaking of liquid coolers being a pain in the ass and breaking, uh, yeah, he brought over his computer so I can replace his um, uh, all-in-one air cooler, uh, I'm sorry, liquid cooler, with a just an air cooler that's going to work great. I'll probably do that tomorrow. I may put that on stream, actually. That would be a good combo, replacing the, the cooler on a computer along with, um, like, coming up with the parts list for the new build, the next build I'll be doing. Probably do that tomorrow. Run out of time today, though. But, yeah, how are we doing? Uh, ooh, damn, CPU temp is up to 90 degrees C. That is... That is a lot. Okay, it went down a little bit. Yeah, it's coming back down. I, I think probably the uh, the fans just weren't spinning fast enough, and it took it a, a few seconds to to uh, to spin up the fans. Golden Gamer. <laughs> watching YouTube shorts. I need to get into those. They're apparently really popular. Uh, yeah, it's down to 82 degrees C now. So it just took could, took the computer uh, a, a few seconds to to spin up the fans. And right now this is this is a uh, an un, unrealistic load on the CPU. Nothing that anyone normal would uh, would use would put the uh, the CPU under that kind of load. So it being in the low 80s in the, the absolute worst case is pretty good. Um, if we were just like running programs or games on this, it wouldn't get anywhere near this hot. But this is good for a stability test. What's the... Uh, the GPU temperature is at 71.5 degrees C. That's pretty good. And that again is like crazy over overuse right now. But I do have to go. Um, I'm sorry. This is this has been a great stream. Everyone's been been so awesome, like being helpful to other people and and to me too. I mean, a couple of uh, suggestions I've got from me all have been just gold. Um, <laughs> favorite game is Furmark, right? Imagine turn it into a game. Hey, I'm winning. It's rendering the fur, isn't it? Alexander the Great, I have good PC, but on some games when I lower the settings, it becomes uh, high settings. I think what you said there may be backwards. If you lower settings, you're getting less FPS. I don't know. I didn't, that doesn't immediately make sense to me why that would be. Oh, YouTube recommended it. That's cool. I, I was uh, I, I was wondering how, how people how people find uh, find the stream. Well, thanks for coming and joining in. Up, oh, somebody's trying to scam, get money sent to a uh, a Bitcoin address. We can't have that. It was automatically hidden by YouTube. <laughs> Loboet says Roblox, Roblox, Roblox. That would be funny. I've never played Roblox. Um, if I were going to play a game on here, it would probably be an old Mario game. Um, I think we talked about uh, playing GTA 5 on here. But yeah, Roblox would be funny. Yeah, I, I got to go there. I, I, I really, I, I'd love to stay. I just can't. Um, again, thanks everybody for coming participating and helping each other out and helping me and just everyone's been been great i haven't seen anybody uh really be misbehaving or anything y'all y'all been great i'll see you next time i'll probably do another stream tomorrow morning um around the same time if not a little bit earlier to do the uh the cooler replacement and the um the the list building for the next uh, computer build but um thanks y'all have a good day